You're currently in South Seas CDF for the session Bypass Control Flow Guard Comprehensively by Yunhai Shang. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining this talk. My name is Zhang Yunhai, and this talk is about uh, Control Flow Guard, or CFG for short. First, uh, let me introduce myself. I came from Beijing, China, and I work for as a focus as a researcher, and mainly focus on exploiter detection and prevention. Now, now this is the agenda. First is a quick overview, and then CFC internals and uh, attack surface. After that, I will show a universal bypass technique, and then finally the fix of that issue. Okay, this is uh, the overview. Control flow guard is a mitigation that prevents redirection control flow to unexpected location. It's not a brand new feature. It was first introduced in Windows 8.1 preview, but disabled in RTM for compatible reason. And then Microsoft enhanced that feature and enabled and enable it in Windows 10 technical preview and uh, Windows 8.1 update 3. Now the next day is safety uh, internals. Since uh, MJ0011 and uh, Jack Tang has uh, discussed this uh, in greater detail, so here I just uh, show some key point. When a module is compiled with CFC enabled, the compiler will append five load configure table entries. The first is for the address of a function pointer, which names the guard CF check function pointer. And the second one is resolved. The third and the fourth defines a table, the guard CF function table. Now this is an example of such a table. Mm, it's a RVA list. Mm, the compiler will analyze the program and uh, find every location that uh, any indirect jump will, will arrive and uh, store those info in this table. So this is what the uh, valid uh, target address. Mm. And uh, the compiler will also inject a uh, check to ensure that the target address is valid. This is uh, the function before CFG enabled. And this is uh, the compiler code after CFG enabled. You can see those in red are injected code. It caused a function. This is the guard CF check function I mentioned before. Where well, CFG enabled mode is loaded. The operating system will map a bitmap into the processor's memory address space. Because the CFG bitmap was used to, used to track all valid target address. And uh, mm, the address of the bitmap itself is stored in NTDLL, mm, in the LDR system DLL initial block. Out of set uh, six, six, one, six zero, and uh, its size was stored in the offset uh, six eight. Mm. 
Mm. When the module is uh, loaded, the operating system was also updated the CFG bitmap. Mm. It used the guard CF function table I mentioned before to update the bitmap. Uh, there is a little trick. Each all the bit in the bitmap will represent uh, one Mm, zero x one zero alleged address, and uh, the even bit in the bitmap will represent the the other fifteen address. Mm, so the compiler will try to make mm, most uh, function alleged. So. In most cases, each bit set in the CFG bitmap will represent only one address and not a, not a, a, a not a multiple address. Besides that, the operating system also updated the check function pointer and pointed it to the NTDL LDR what is the user call target? So at the runtime, this function will be called just before any indirect call. In this function, it will test the target address and to see is is the address is valid. This is how how um, how it test the address. It will use the highest 24 bit of the target address as an index and treat the CFG bitmap as an array of 32 bit integral. So this can get one 30 bit from the CFG bitmap. And then it will use the third to the eighth bit from the target address as a offset and uh, test if the address is a legend. If not, it will work the offset with one. So this is uh, the little trick I just mentioned. Mm, this is uh, offset, it will Fetch the fetch one bit from the thirty two bit um, from the seventy bit map, and uh, test if that bit is set. If so, the target address is valid, and uh, it will return to call the indirect call. Otherwise, it will raise an exception and uh, close the program. Uh, this is how the function raises the exception. It will do more checks of the environment. If the processor executor flag was set enable or ATL trunk emulation or the protector is enable uh, is, is executable, it will with the exception, otherwise it will return two. Now this is, this, now that's the key point of the safety internals, which will be, be very important in the bypass technique. After that, I will discuss the tech surface of the CFG. Uh, I will discuss five attack surfaces. First is non-CFG modules. As any compiler involved the mitigation future,
modules that are not compiled with those future enabled will always be programmed. For CFC, now CFG modules will has two factors. The first, it will contain unprotected indirect code. Of course, since it didn't compile with CFG enabled, so any direct code in that module will be unprotected. And if those indirect code can be controlled, CFG can be bypassed from that. The second effect is that what is in that mode will have the corresponding bit set in the CFG bitmap. So what the address in that module will be valid. So you can get a RP from those, from those modes. But uh, any compiler involved uh, mitigation future. Now CFG modules will exhaust eventually, since vendors tries to compile new modules with CFG enabled. So there, are, there will be less and less non CFG mode. The second attack surface is JIT generated code. Because JIT generated code is just like non CFG modules, if it contain indirect core, it's unprotected. And all is in the generated code, the corresponding bit was set in the CFG bitmap. So um, just, uh, just uh, almost the same as non CFG modules. But uh, Microsoft uh, is um, continuing to improve CFG protection. So both are not longer the case in the latest version of Edge, the default browser of Windows 10. In, in, in that version, JIT code is uh, instructed, and the JIT code pages do not have a repeat set. Only few really indirect code target will have this cell bit set. So this is, this will not be a problem for a long time. I, I think Microsoft will, um, will do this in other, in other modules that will generate JIT code. The third attack surface is uh, indirect jump. Because it, this can redirect control flow just like uh, indirect core. And this is uh, an example of uh, an indirect jump that can be fully controlled. And uh, and for this uh, special one, Microsoft has added protection in in the in Windows 10 for at least this special one. And there can be other internal jump not protected, but I think uh, as time go, Microsoft will protect all the internal jump as internal core. So this will be a problem for a long time. Uh, this won't be a problem for a long time. The fourth attack surface is uh, return address. Because uh, this can also redefine the control flow, but uh, it uh, not like an uh, integral jump. It uh, can't be protected use the same technique as the uh, integral core. So this uh, maybe maybe this can be a problem for a long time. Uh, maybe you know um, traditional stack overflow are not usable nowadays. 
So we need a new technical to write the return address. If you have the whole address space read write capability, we can do this. First, uh, we search for the stack, and then we search in the stack for an appreciate uh, frame, and then replace the whole stack frame with craft one, and wait it to return to our special code. Uh, as, as far as I know, this uh, will, will not be we are, we are not be protected by Microsoft, at least uh, for uh, well, we are not be protected recently. Now this is the last uh, attack surface, the valid API functions. There are uh, some API functions which can be used to exploit directly. The, the first three was, uh, can, can be used to switch the context. So you, you can control the ERP register completely. And the, the Fourth and the fifth one can execute an executable directly, and the last one can load a library. You may notice that I marked the first three in red. This is because this function are no longer valid in Dr. Kotaki. So, Mm, the usable are uh, only three left, and I think this will be shorter and shorter, and uh, this attack surface will not be a problem for a long time. Now, next I will show you the universal bypass technical. The objective of the universal bypass is to bypass CFG comprehensively. That is to say, when, you, when we use this technical, we can make any exploit technical that be mitigation by CFG. We uh, exploitable again, as there is no CFG. How could you do that? Let's review how the guard self check function is called. It's called through a function point. That is to say, it's a integral call itself. So, if we Overwrite this function pointer. We can do some interesting thing. Let's see the behavior the check function do when the target address is valid. This is the instruction it is code. You can see from the aspect of the caller. This instruction has no difference with uh, only a single return instruction because it has no return address checked. So if we overwrite the GUTCF check function pointer and uh, point it to the single return, any address it test will be valid, and uh, we can overwrite the indirect code with any address as before. So this is our new objective, to overwrite the guard self check function point. But there is a, a big problem. The function pointer is read-only, so as uh, that's denied. So we had to 
a new objective to make a read-only memory writable. That's the metric here. It uh, seems to be crazy since we cannot uh, execute the code uh, now because we haven't uh, bypassed CFG now. But uh, after some research, I found uh, an interesting class in JavaScript 9. That's the custom heap. JavaScript 9 used the custom heap, custom heap to manage its custom memory. This is the structure of the that class. You can see that it has many list in in the heap. From the offset six four to the offset EC, there's there's many double linked list. Uh, we, we can call the buckets. Each bucket is a double link list of custom heap page. Oops. When this class is destructed, it has some interesting behavior. Now this is the function it will call. First, the destructor will call free wall to free wall the memory it allocated. And the free wall will call free bucket for each bucket it has. Free bucket will call ensure page with write for each page, each page in the double linked list. Now this is the key point. Ensure page read write will call auto protect with the following arguments. You can see the new protect is page read write. That's just what we need. So if we can control the arguments, the first arguments we can make uh, any page we like to be writable. Now the first question is, where can we find the custom hemi? The custom hip is, um, is a member of the interpreter trunk emit at offset C. And the intermeter chunk emit is pointed by a mem of JS script context at offset 4B0. And this is, this is uh, it's not a fixed one across versions of JS script. But I, I think uh, uh, it only have changed once. So for the early version of JS script, Nine. Mm, this may be uh, um, maybe an offset uh, a little larger. And the uh, JS superior context is pointed by a member of script engine at uh, offset four. Next, uh, script engine is pointed by a member of superior set at uh, offset 42. Uh, superior set is very easy to be located. You can choose any object you like that has a point, has a member point to it, and put, put it in uh, an array you can predict to read the address. So we so we can locate the custom heap 
That's a review. Let's review the structure. When we locate the custom heap, we can search the double link list, the search the buckets, and find the and find the appreciate one to modify to overwrite is and to modify the one page in that list. And uh, try to trigger the destructor, so we can wait the destructor to make the page we chose writable. But uh, but when we reach the destructor, we will find that all the buckets are empty. The, the one we chose and the overwriter is uh, not there. Why? Because all custom pages are decommitted in JS Swift context closed. And the decommitted custom page, custom heap page, is removed from the bucket. That is the double linked list. And the, the function JS Swift context close is called before the destructor. So when we reach the destructor, all the buckets will be empty. We overwrite the, the the one we overwrite is no longer there. To resolve this, we have two choices. The first is to insert a fake custom page into the bucket. Since it is faked, it will be decommitted and will survive in, in the uh, will survive to the destruction. And uh, the other solution is to prevent uh, the, the one we chose to overwrite from being decommitted. This is, that, that is to modify some flag in the custom heap object to achieve this. So now we can make uh, any read-only memory writable. That is to say, we can overwrite the guard self check function pointer with anything we like. That is to say, we can bypass the CFG comprehensively. Next, uh, the, the final is the fix for that issue. This is the timeline. We report uh, this issue to MSRC at uh, January 22. And uh, it was confirmed uh, in general 30. And the, uh, since, since the, the capability to make any read-only memory page writable is very essential, so Microsoft uh, fixed this issue very quickly and uh, released the patch at uh, March 10. Very nice work. Now let's see how Microsoft fixes this issue. Uh, in the patch, it uh, introduced uh, a new function, the hip page allocator protect pages. It's uh, a wrapper of the function auto protect. In this function, it will check uh, the arguments before. It called the uh, word protect. The check including the following. 
first uh, the LP address must uh, be a legend. Next, uh, the LP address must uh, bigger than the segment's address. And uh, the LP address plus the DW size must uh, less than the segment address plus segment size. That is to say, the range of the core, the memory range of the core must be inside the segment. And uh, the DW size must uh, smaller than the region size. The last one is the key point. This, um, this function protect pages has uh, an argument uh, uh, I call it the expected protect. It will check uh, um, the, the memory region's origin protected if, um, and check if it is equal to the expected protect. Any check of this field, it will always an exception and close the program. Now, let's see the ensure page rewrite function. It will call the protect pages instead of what you protect. And it will set the expected protect to page execute. That is to say, it only allow us to make an executable page to be rewritable no longer any type. So we can't make the reader only one to be writable. Uh, that's how Microsoft fixed this issue. Very effective. Now, the last is uh, some sound pass. The first is uh, no Save bullet. CFG is uh, very good, but uh, still not good enough, and they are made, um, and can be bypassed. The second one is uh, read only is not uh, equal secure. Uh, you can see the guard self function is read only, but uh, it's not uh, secure. It can be alright. The last one is uh, control the date, control the execute. You can see we only control the customer heap, the buckets of the customer heap. We can control how, how it executes and uh, let, uh, let, uh, the, let, let it uh, make what we want. So that's all. What's um, any question? Uh, 